Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to Webinar Wednesdays with IFTE. Thank you for joining us for our webinar on teaching geometry to GED math students. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I'll be your presenter today. Before we get started, I'd like to go over some quick housekeeping rules. During the presentation, if you have a question, please type it into the Q&A option as I do have some time reserved at the end of the presentation to answer all of your questions. During the webinar, attending microphones will be muted. You will be in listen-only mode. And of course, today's presentation will be recorded. It will be archived and available on the IPTE website within 48 hours. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome educators. Today, we will embark on a journey to empower your GED geometry instruction. We have three main objectives, which we will explore through engaging activities and discussions. Our first objective is to provide you with activities that support GED geometry instruction for two-dimensional figures. We will delve into the various strategies, approaches, and resources that you can use to make your lessons more engaging and effective. Next, we will shift into focusing on three-dimensional figures. Together, we will explore hands-on activities and instructional methods that will help your students better understand the complex world of three-dimensional geometry. And lastly, we will examine how to properly support these activities with, effect with effective instructional strategies and approaches. We will also look into integrating technology in our classrooms to create an interactive and modern learning environment. Our ultimate goal is to equip you with the skills and knowledge necessary to enhance your GED geometry instruction for both two-dimensional and three-dimensional figures. By the end of this session, you will be equipped with practical strategies, tools, and a comprehensive guide of activities. Our comprehensive webinar for instructors aims to equip you with the necessary tools and techniques to teach geometry, covering two and three dimensional figures. The focus is on calculating dimensions, perimeter, circumference, surface area, and area for two dimensional figures, as well as volume for 3D figures. A variety of engaging activities have been curated to cater to diverse learning styles utilizing visual aids, real-world examples, and hands-on experiences to emphasize the importance of ongoing assessment in tracking students' progress and adapting teaching methods as needed. Recognizing that a dynamic approach to teaching is essential for students' success in their GED exams and beyond, our webinar today offers various teaching methods and strategies that can be incorporated into geometry lessons which foster a stimulating and supportive learning environment. Our goal is to deepen your understanding of geometry and develop the skills to effectively instruct and inspire our next generation of problem solvers and critical thinkers. The first component of this webinar aims to provide teachers with a thorough approach to teach students the essential competencies which are related with two dimensional figures in geometry. Our focus will be on computing dimensions, perimeter, circumference, and the area of various shapes, such as triangles, rectangles, circles, polygons, and composite geometric figures. By introducing relevant formulas and guiding students through problem solving exercises, teachers will be able to effectively utilize real world examples and visual aids while effectively leveraging hands-on activities to facilitate understanding. Emphasizing collaborative learning and incorporating a variety of teaching methods will cater to diverse learning styles, helping students develop a strong foundation in these competencies. Ongoing evaluation of students' retention and progress is essential throughout the implementation Teachers should employ formative assessments, quizzes, or problem-solving activities to gauge student performance. 
By combining direct instruction, guided practice, collaborative learning, and technology-based activities, educators can ensure that students acquire the necessary skills and knowledge to succeed in their GED examination. In addition to the competencies related to two-dimensional figures, our webinar will also address key competencies associated with three-dimensional figures and geometry through a separate set of activities. <clears throat> These activities encompass determining dimensions, surface area, and volume for a range of shapes, such as rectangular prisms, cylinders, right prisms, right pyramids, cones, and spheres. By presenting the appropriate geometric formulas and guiding students in problem-solving activities, teachers can effectively utilize real-world examples, visual aids, and these hands-on experiences to cultivate a deeper understanding of these concepts. Employing a mix of teaching methods, which emphasize cooperative learning styles, will address, will address the various learning preferences of students, contributing to a solid foundation in these essential competencies. Concerning on calculated side lengths, height, radius, that or diameter when given a volume or surface area will further refine students' abilities to tackle geometric problems. By focusing on these competencies and implementing diverse teaching strategies, educators can help students excel in their GED exam and prepare them for the future. Let's take a moment to discuss instructional technology and strategies. By emphasizing the use of hands-on activities and collaborative learning, educators can, can actively involve students in the learning process, resulting in a deeper comprehension of mathematical concepts. By cultivating a supportive learning environment and tailoring instruction to students' unique needs and abilities, Teachers can help learners develop essential geometry competencies. Moreover, the integration of technology, including dynamic geometry software, online platforms, and collaborative tools can significantly enhance the learning experience. This, encouraging, this encourages collaboration and promotes a deeper understanding of the concepts. By, using, by utilizing technology, Educators can create a more inclusive and engaging learning environment, which can facilitate continuous assessment and provide the benefits of data-driven decision-making. This comprehensive approach aims to empower educators to deliver high-quality geometry instruction, preparing students for, for success in their examinations. To effectively teach two- and three-dimensional figures, Educators may incorporate hands-on activities, such as the ones we're gonna outline in today's webinar, collaborative learning and problem-solving exercises. These approaches actively involve students in the learning process by allowing them to interact with and examine geometric shapes, resulting in a more profound comprehension of these mathematical concepts. Instructors, should cultivate a supportive learning environment that encourages students to work in pairs or small groups, promoting peer interaction and cooperative learning. It is crucial to structure the learning experience by providing guidance and feedback as needed, while progressively increasing the task complexity to challenge students and facilitate skill mastery. To successfully implement the activities guides for two and three dimensional figures, educators should begin by establishing a well-defined objective and aligning the activities with the intended learning outcomes. This process involves choosing tasks which are suitable for the student's age, needs, and abilities. Next, teachers must provide clear instructions and essential resources, including manipulatives, measuring tools, and templates to equip students with the necessary tools for completing the activities. To maintain student engagement, 
It is vital to diversify activities by incorporating a combination of individual, paired, and group work. Educators should monitor students' progress, offering timely feedback and modifying instruction as required. And lastly, integrating reflection and discussion opportunities encourages students to share their findings, evaluate their strategies, and connect their experiences to the broader concepts being studied. Next, I'd like to overview the use of technology to support curriculum standards and the content indicators. Integrating technology into the geometry curriculum can significantly enhance the learning experience and support the achievement of curriculum standards and content indicators. By incorporating digital tools and resources, teachers can deliver engaging and interactive lessons that cater to diverse learning styles foster collaboration, and promote deeper understanding of essential geometric concepts. Technology can also facilitate continuous assessment and provide valuable feedback on students' progress, allowing educators to tailor their instruction to meet the unique needs of their learners. Technology can be utilized in various ways to support curriculum standards for both two and three-dimensional figures. For example, dynamic geometry software, such as GeoGebra, can help students visualize and manipulate geometric shapes, fostering a deeper understanding of the properties and relationships between different figures. Teachers can also use online platforms to create interactive quizzes, games, or simulations that engage students in problem-solving activities allowing them to apply their knowledge of geometric formulas within various contexts. Furthermore, collaborative tools such as Google Workspace can enable students to work together on group projects, share their findings, and provide peer feedback. With technology, educators can create a more inclusive and engaging environment that supports the development of essential geometry competencies. Ongoing evaluation is an essential component of effective geometry instruction, and technology can play a vital role in facilitating this process. By utilizing digital assessment tools and learning management systems, teachers can easily track students' progress, identifying areas of weakness, and providing personalized, individualized feedback to help learners improve their understanding of these concepts. Additionally, technology can support data-driven teaching, allowing educators to analyze assessment data, identify patterns or trends, and make informed adjustments to their instructional strategies. In this way, technology serves as a powerful ally in supporting the achievement of curriculum standards and content indicators in geometry, empowering educators to deliver high-quality instruction that prepares students for the GED. We have designed an activities guide to engage students in the exploration of two-dimensional figures and their properties. These activities allow them to dive deeper into the world of geometry. And these hands-on activities will guide students as they grasp and apply essential mathematical concepts, such as area, perimeter, circumference, and the Pythagorean theorem. Focusing on a variety of shapes like triangles, rectangles, circles, polygons, and composite figures, students will have the opportunity to work in pairs or small groups. This collaborative environment will encourage them to measure, calculate, and problem solve together, promoting teamwork and communication skills. Each activity in the guide has been meticulously crafted not only to teach essential skills, but also to spark curiosity and inspire further investigation. As students participate in these activities, 
they will not only strengthen their understanding of geometry, but also develop a deeper appreciation for the world of mathematics. Incorporating these activities into your teaching practice will not only make learning geometry more enjoyable for your students, but will also provide them with a solid foundation that is essential for their success on the GED exam. Experience the transformative power of these hands-on learning as we dive into these activities. We'll begin with the Tangram Challenge. A Tangram is a puzzle consi consisting of seven flat geometric pieces that are put together to form various shapes. This engaging activity, the Tangram Challenge, allows students to explore the area and perimeter of triangles and rectangles using tangrams in a fun and interactive way. Here's how you can implement this activity in your classroom. First, gather the necessary materials for the activity, which include tangram puzzles, tangram templates, rulers, and calculators. Begin by dividing the class into pairs and encourage teamwork and communication. Next, distribute a Tangram puzzle and template to each pair of students. Instruct them to assemble the Tangram puzzle using the triangles and rectangles to form a larger square or rectangle. This process will engage their spatial reasoning and problem solving skills. Once the students have completed the assembly, ask them to measure the sides of each triangle and rectangle using a ruler. This step will help them understand the dimensions and proportions of each shape. Now it's time to put their math skills to the test. Have the students calculate the area and perimeter of each triangle and rectangle using the appropriate formulas. Encourage them to use calculators to ensure accuracy and efficiency. Finally, challenge students to unleash their creativity by designing their own unique tangram pattern. Ask them to calculate the area and perimeter of their design as well, reinforcing the concepts they've just learned. By implementing this tangram challenge in your classroom, you'll be providing an engaging hands-on experience that will deepen students' understanding of geometry and strengthen problem-solving activities through collaboration. Let's take a look at our next activity. The circular art gallery activity is a creative and engaging way for students to learn about the area and circumference of circles. By incorporating a hands-on art process into the learning process, this activity fosters a deeper understanding of these concepts. Here's how you can implement this in your classroom. First, Divide the class into groups of three or four to promote teamwork and collaboration. Next, gather the necessary materials for the activity. For this activity, that includes circular objects of different sizes, some colored paper, scissors, glue, string, rulers, and of course, your calculators. Instruct the students to create a piece of circular art by tracing and cutting out different sized circles from the colored paper. Encourage them to arrange the circles in a visually appealing design that showcases their creativity. Once the students have completed their designs, have them measure the radius or diameter of each circle in their artwork using a string and a ruler. This step helps them to understand the dimensions and proportions of circles. Now ask the students to calculate the area and circumference of each circle using the appropriate formulas. As always, I like to encourage them to use calculators, not only to make sure that they're getting the right calculations, but also to ensure efficiency. Finally, create a gallery display of the students' circular art pieces along with their corresponding area and circumference calculations. This showcase not only celebrates their creativity, but also reinforces the geometric concepts that they've learned. 
By implementing the circular art gallery activity, you'll provide them with an engaging, hands-on experience that deepens their understanding while allowing them to showcase their creativity and imagination. Our next activity is one of my personal favorites, the Polygon City. The Polygon City activity is a fun and interactive way to teach students about the perimeter and area of polygons. By designing their own city maps, students will be able to apply geometric concepts in a creative context. Here's how you can implement this activity in your classroom. You'll begin by dividing the class into pairs. You'll gather the necessary materials, which for this activity includes polygon templates, some graph paper, rulers, calculators, and some colored pencils. Next, you'll distribute a set of polygon templates, graph paper, rulers, and colored pencils to each pair of students. Instruct them to design a city map by drawing various polygons on the graph paper, which will represent buildings, parks, and other structures. This creative exercise will engage their problem solving and spatial reasoning skills. Once the students have completed their city maps, have them measure the lengths of each polygon using rulers. And then ask them to calculate the perimeter and area of each polygon using the appropriate formulas. Next, challenge the students to determine the side lengths of the polygons when given the perimeter or area. This exercise will deepen their understanding of the relationship between the dimensions, the perimeter, and area. And finally, have each pair showcase their polygon city to the class and discuss the calculations behind their design. The presentation will not only encourage communication skills, but also reinforce the geometric concepts that they've learned. By implementing the Polygon City activity in your classroom, you're providing an engaging and hands-on experience that allows students to develop a deeper understanding of these concepts while allowing them to showcase their spatial reasoning abilities. Our next activity is a Geo Murals. And the Geo Murals activity is a dynamic an engaging way for students to learn about the perimeter and area of composite geometric figures. By creating their own geometric murals, students are applying knowledge of geometry in a creative and collaborative setting. And here's how you can implement this in your classroom. You'll begin by dividing the class into groups of three or four students to promote teamwork and collaboration. Gather the necessary materials for the activity, including composite geometric figure templates, rulers, calculators, colored paper, scissors, glue, and large mural paper. Distribute the composite geometric figure templates, rulers, and other materials to each group. Each group will receive a large piece of the mural paper as well. Instruct the students to create a geometric mural by tracing, cutting out, and arranging composite geometric figures on the mural paper. This encourages creativity and also that really important spatial reasoning skill. Once the students have completed their murals, instruct them to calculate the perimeter and area of each composite figure within the mural. They should break down the composite figures into simpler shapes and use appropriate formulas for each. This process will help them understand the relationship between composite figures and their component shapes. And of course, finally, you'll display the finished murals in the classroom, along with the detailed calculations for each composite figure, as well as the breakdown to their component shapes. This showcase not only celebrates our students' creativity, but reinforces the concepts. By implementing the Geo Murals activity in your classroom, you're providing another engaging hands-on experience. This one focuses on spatial learning.
Let's take a look at our next two-dimensional activity. And this one is called Pythagorean Detectives. The Pythagorean Detectives activity is an exciting and interactive way for students to learn about the Pythagorean theorem. By turning the classroom into a mystery solving adventure, students will apply their knowledge of geometry in a fun and engaging context. And here's how you can implement this in your classroom. You'll begin by dividing the class into groups of three or four students. Next, you'll gather the necessary materials, which include right triangle, tem right triangle templates, rulers, calculators, and some envelopes that will contain clues. Distribute the right angle templates, rulers, and calculators to each group. Hide envelopes with the clues throughout the classroom with each clue containing a right triangle problem that requires the use of the Pythagorean theorem to solve. Instruct the students to search for the hidden envelopes and use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the unknown side lengths of the right triangles in the clues. This hands-on activity encourages collaboration, critical thinking, and active learning. Next, you'll provide each group with a detective sheet where they can record their findings and the solutions for each clue. Once all the envelopes have been found and the problems have been solved, have each group present their detective sheet and explain how they use the Pythagorean theorem to solve the clues. Finally, as a class, Discuss the importance of the Pythagorean theorem in solving real life problems and its applications in various fields. This conversation will deepen the student's understanding of the relevance of this geometric concept in the world around them. By implementing the Pythagorean detectives activity, you're providing another hands-on experience in which students can develop a deeper understanding of this theorem while sparking their curiosity and their group problem solving abilities. So we're now gonna transition into three dimensional figures. The following guide, the next couple of activities, provides instructors with a series of engaging and hands-on activities, which teach students about volume and surface area concepts as they apply to various three dimensional figures. Students will work in pairs or small groups to explore tasks such as designing and constructing boxes based on specific volume and surface area requirements, building cylinder towers with cardboard tubes arranged by volume or surface area, and assembling prism puzzles using templates and colored paper. They'll also create pyramid and cone sculptures with labeled dimensions. Additionally, students will measure and paint foam spheres to represent planets in the solar system, comparing their models to the actual planets in terms of volume and surface area. These engaging activities promote critical thinking, problem solving, and collaboration among students and help foster a deeper understanding of the mathematical principles involved in three-dimensional figures. The box design challenge is an engaging and creative activity that teaches students about the volume and surface area of rectangular prisms. By designing and constructing their own boxes, students will apply their knowledge of geometry in a hands-on and practical context. Here's how you can implement the box design challenge in your classroom. You'll begin by dividing the class into pairs, which encourages collaboration and teamwork. Gather the necessary materials for the activity, including cardstock, rulers, scissors, calculators, and tape. Next, you'll distribute the cardstock rulers, scissors, calculator, and tape to each pair. 
Assign each pair a specific volume and surface area for a rectangular prism. Challenge the students to design a box that meets the assigned volume and surface area requirements. This task will require students to apply their understanding of the geometric formulas and think critically about the relationship between volume, surface area, and dimensions. Next, you'll have the students calculate the dimensions of the box using the appropriate geometric formulas. Once they have confirmed the dimensions, instruct the students to construct their box using the cardstock, scissors, and tape. Finally, have each pair present their box design and explain how they determined the dimensions. This presentation will encourage students to reflect on their problem solving process and any mistakes they might have made while they were trying to calculate the correct size of the box. It will also help them communicate their understanding of the geometric concepts. By implementing the box design challenge, you're providing students with another hands-on experience that engages the understanding of three-dimensional geometry while also encouraging creativity and collaboration. Our next activity is the cylinder tower activity. The cylinder tower activity is an engaging and interactive way to teach students about the volume and surface area of cylinders. By working with real world objects and constructing a tower, students will apply their knowledge of geometry in a hands-on and collaborative context. Here's how you can implement the cylinder tower activity in your classroom. Begin by dividing the class into groups of three or four, which promotes teamwork and collaboration. Gather the necessary materials for the activity, which include cardboard tubes of various sizes, rulers, calculators, string, and tape. Next, you'll distribute one of each material to each group. Instruct the students to measure the height and diameter of each tube using the string and ruler. Next, have the students calculate the volume and surface area of each tube using the appropriate geometric formulas. This will reinforce their understanding of the concepts while giving them a fun and hands-on way to experience the utilization of the formulas. Challenge the students to build a tower using cardboard tubes and arranging them by volume or surface area in either ascending or descending order. This creative task will encourage critical thinking while also allowing them an opportunity to engage their problem solving skills. Once the towers are complete, have each group present their cylinder tower and explain their arrangement strategy. This presentation will allow students to reflect on their thought process and communicate their understanding of the geometric concepts involved. Implementing the, the cylinder tower activity is a great opportunity to provide them with an engaging activity to practice geometry and encourages teamwork and problem solving. Our next activity is the prism puzzle. The prism puzzle activity offers a hands-on and engaging way for students to learn about the volume and surface area of right prisms. By constructing their own prisms and arranging them into larger 3D shapes, students will gain a deeper understanding of this geometric concept. Here's how you can implement this activity in your classroom. Start by dividing the class into pairs, promoting teamwork and collaboration. Gather the necessary materials for the activity, including right prism templates, rulers, 
calculators, scissors, tape, and some colored paper. First, distribute the materials to each group. Instruct the students to construct right prisms using the templates and the colored paper. Next, have the students calculate the volume and surface area of each prism using the appropriate geometric formulas. After, you will challenge the students to arrange the prisms into a larger three-dimensional shape, such as a cube or rectangular prism, and calculate the total volume and surface area. This creative task will encourage critical thinking and problem-solving skills. Finally, have each pair present their own prism puzzle and discuss their findings with the class. This presentation will allow students to reflect on their thought process and communicate their understanding of the geometric concepts involved. By implementing the prism puzzle, you're providing another hands-on engaging experience, but one that deepens students' understanding of this concept while, in, while encouraging pair teamwork and problem solving. Our next activity is the pyramid and cone sculptures activity, which offers a fun and engaging way for students to explore volume and surface area of right pyramids and cones. By constructing their own pyramids and cones and creating a 3D sculpture, students will deepen their understanding of these concepts. Here's how you can implement the pyramid and cone sculptures activity in your classroom. You'll begin by dividing the class into groups of either three or four students. Next, prepare the necessary materials for the activity, which includes pyramid and cone templates, rulers, calculators, scissors, tape, and colored paper. Distribute the pyramid and cone templates, rulers, calculators, scissors, and tape, and colored paper to each group. Guide the students in constructing pyramids and cones using the templates and colored paper. Once the students have assembled their pyramids and cones, instruct them to calculate the volume and surface area of each shape using the appropriate geometric formulas. This will reinforce their understanding of the concepts and formulas that are related to right pyramids and cones. Next, challenge the students to create a 3D sculpture using the pyramids and cones that they have already constructed and have them ensure that each shape's dimensions are labeled. This creative task encourages critical thinking and problem solving. Lastly, have each group present their sculpture and discuss the volume and surface area calculations with the class. This presentation will allow students to reflect on the thought process and communicate their understandings of the geometric concepts while showcasing their creativity. Our next activity is another one of my favorites, um, and it's called the planet sizing activity. In the planet sizing activity, students will delve into the volume and surface area of spheres by creating foam sphere models, which represent planets in the solar system. You can begin by dividing the class into pairs and distributing foam spheres of various sizes, rulers, calculators, string, some paint, and brushes to each pair. Next, guide the students in measuring the diameter of each sphere with a string and ruler, then instruct them to calculate the volume and surface area using the appropriate geometric formulas.
Next, you'll encourage students to paint their spheres to resemble different planets from the solar system using reference images as guidance. And next, you'll ask them to determine the radius or diameter when provided with the surface area. Encourage students to research the actual dimensions of their chosen planets and compare their foam sphere models to real planets in terms of volume and surface area. Next, display the finished planet models alongside each other's pairs calculation and allow comparisons to the actual dimensions of the planets. Finally, have each pair present their work, discussing their findings and any interesting insights gained from comparing their models to the real planets. That concludes um, all of our activities. Uh, I, I did try my best to break it up, you know, all the two-dimensional and then three-dimensional activities. Uh, before we get started on our Q&A though, I'd like to close with some considerations um, for the successful implementation of these, of these activities in class. Uh, to ensure student success in these geometry activities, it's essential to create a supportive learning environment uh, and provide clear instructions while differentiating tasks based on abilities. You also wanna encourage collaboration and presentations because that is essential in helping us build our students' soft skills. Next, review the relevant geometric concepts and formulas uh, to offer guidance and create an atmosphere where students feel comfortable discussing their ideas. Break down instructions into manageable steps um, use visual aids and continuously support students as they work. It's also critical to differentiate activities for various skill levels uh, and promote collaboration for shared learning while emphasizing the importance of presenting work. So we wanna foster a positive and engaging learning experience. And this will result in students developing a deeper understanding of the volume and surface area concepts, especially. So now I'm gonna open up the floor to some questions. Um, so just real quick, uh, for those of you um, that do have a question, please use the Q and A box, and I'll be uh, I'll be watching for here, and I'll give a few minutes. I don't see anything at the current moment. So if you've entered any questions in the chat, please uh, take a moment to type those into the Q and A box. And um, I really hope that you guys find these these hands on activities interesting. Um, I know that having students work in pairs and collaborating with one another is, is critical in sharing their understanding. And, and I think it's, it's honestly quite amazing how often students will learn just as much from each other as they learn from us. Um, so I'll, I'll wait a few more seconds in case anybody has any questions about any of the activities that were presented in today's webinar. It doesn't look like we have any questions today. So that is a good thing. Um, there are uh, detailed steps for each of these activities in the accompanying webinar handbook that really breaks them down uh, by step. And it also talks about which content indicators and curriculum standards they are tied to to help you support that in your classroom. So it is a really a great lesson planning tool um, the accompanying uh, web webinar handbook. So uh, real quick, I want to thank you all for attending the webinar. Uh, we do issue a quick feedback poll because we do value your feedback. It helps us kind of uh, improve and provide you guys with the best professional development that we can. While you complete our quick poll, I'd like to take the time to invite you to attend our next Tech Tuesday webinar which will take place um, Tuesday, April 25th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it is called A Wise Approach to Designing Online Courses. A uh, Wise Approach to, to Designing Online Courses. Very relevant material. As you know, our Tech Tuesdays, we really, uh, you know, kind of condense it into a short presentation, 30 minutes to get you guys going implementing instructional technology that really improves classroom um, instruction. So 
once again, I do want to thank you all for attending today. Um, your attendance is, is you know, great. And, and please check out that webinar handbook uh, with the accompanying activities. And have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon.